All right, so this isn't going to be too much of a video, but it is an explanation of how to take off the back of your proton pack. So you don't need to remove the straps. You can just leave those on there. And then these screws where the battery pack is, you don't have to remove those either. Um, so I just took out 10 screws. I've got, it'll come in handy having a magnet close by. So I took out 10 screws and I'm pretty sure there's only 10 that go all the way around the outside. So these straps might kind of hide everything. So there's another hole there, one there, there, um, there, and there. So, and yeah, okay. So I think there's 10 all the way around the outside. Now there's more on the inside here too. So there's this one. Um, and then these two I've marked because I noticed the first time I took the pack apart, those ones were a little bit shorter than the rest of the screws. Um, I'm thinking maybe they're all supposed to be the same size, but mine were a little bit shorter. So uh, pay attention to the location on the pack. So it's just beneath the straps. Where those little short screws are so keep those separately i guess um let's see what else there's one there i think there's one way down in there and one there and then i think here and here um these two screws or holes yeah let me get a marker uh i don't know if this is going to show up at all or not but i'm going to circle those Oh yeah, that's showing up. Just so I remember next time I take this apart. Um, these two are holding on some tubes on the front. Um, so as soon as you pull out those screws, then those tubes will drop. But uh, you're not breaking anything. They're just holding them on in place. So make sure that you put those tubes back. And then I would recommend putting these screws back in first. Like you'd snap the snap the shell back on the whole back part, and put those screws in first, and then go all the way around the outside, and then get the little short guys on the inside, or like these little short guys, and um, yeah, the rest of the shallow holes, I should say, rather than short, because they're all the same size. All right, so I'm going to take off the pack and I'll show you on the inside and what it looks like. All right, so I got the back off. Um, there's like posts here, which are all like registration spots that snap into certain areas. So you're going to have to kind of pry those and, uh, you know, be careful. It's going to feel like you're breaking it, but they're going to need to come up so they've got all these uh like uh registration uh slots on there so that they can only go one way um so there's 17 screws all together and there's still one that got stuck inside here right there so i might as well just leave them there i guess and then uh, the short ones that I was talking about are on the inside of the magnet. Now, they're not much shorter. But, whoops. There, you can see how it's a little bit different. So I'll keep those on the inside. And the other ones on the outside. So some, some of the screws will, should come up with the screwdriver as long as you're using a magnet to pull everything out. And uh, like some of them might stay. Oh. There, he probably fell out. <clears throat> some of them might stay like that. Um, okay, so once you get that apart, there's wires right here. Those are the ones leading to the battery pack. 
and there's a connector right there. Those are the wires that Adam Savage cut by mistake. Um, and then you can just pull up on that. It's hard to do, and it's going to be, it requires a lot of force. So I'm going to set the phone down. There we go. All right, so you probably heard that. It sounded like I broke it, but it's uh, it's good. So that comes undone, and then, so now you can move the lid or the back or whatever you want to call it away, separate from the pack. Um, so I actually kind of prefer leaving the straps on, even though they're in the way a little bit when you're taking the screws off, but because they kind of help once you get all the screws out, it helps to loosen this up. So you pull on those straps and that, that'll loosen up the corners anyways. And then you can just kind of push around, uh, in order to get that off. All right. So the ribbon cable, which is the thing I'm going to remove right now, um, that's pegged in place. So it comes through here and it's pegged with these three screws. So it's actually two screws holding that on. And then uh, one of these other rubber hoses is kind of bent over and folded over these posts or stumps or whatever. So I'm gonna take the ribbon cable off and try to clean it really good. All right, so I got the ribbon cable off and uh, yeah, this is how dirty and grimy it looks like that's way too much in my opinion um it looks a little better on this side but uh i just used a hair dryer to soften it up a bit because it was looped around and kinked quite a bit um so i'm not going to do a video of the process of cleaning this thing but all i'm going to use is i'm going to start with some of this bonnie emmy stuff or Bonami, or however you pronounce that, and see if that works. I'm gonna use this, and if this doesn't work, then I'm gonna use some alcohol, okay? So I'll show you the results after that. All right, so here it is, and none of this stuff worked. So what you wanna use is this stuff called Goof Off, um, and that, Clean this, cleans this up like right away. As soon as you take this on there, it just wipes off, just like cleaning windows. Um, the problem is, this is all like corroded and gross looking, and I've only got a couple drops left of that stuff, so I'm not going to be able to do the back side. Um, or maybe this is the back side, who knows? Or no, that's the front side. But this is the side that actually twists inward so i'm gonna have to get some more goof off i guess and uh but that's what this is for like it's for cleaning stuff without ruining the paint or like the finish on it so that'll take all this stuff off easily um yeah darn i've only got a little bit left like the alcohol was working a little bit but um You'd be all day cleaning all this black off of there. I didn't want to do that. So I guess I'll have to pick up some more goof off. But yeah, 100% use that. That's what... Oh, yeah. And make sure... Oops, I just took a picture. Make sure you wear a mask because this stuff is really strong. And like I'm wearing just a COVID mask right now, but I can't smell it. So I guess it's working. All right, so use that and like open a window. So I should probably open a window. Okay, so something else that might work is this uh, oven cleaner stuff. I've used that on paint before and it worked pretty well. But um, that stuff you have to let sit for a bit. So I sprayed the whole backside and I'm gonna let it sit for about 20 minutes. And then uh, we'll see how well that works.
So that's something in addition to, I think it's cheaper than uh, Goof Off. So yeah, we'll see how well that works. Alright, so it's been about 25 minutes, give or take. And um, I'll just, I'll show this part on camera. I'm just going to grab a paper towel right now and we'll see how much of this comes off. Alright. Like how much of the color comes off. <laughs> Nothing really. Okay, so it's helping if you scrub it really good. Uh, so yeah, for that oven cleaner to work, you probably have to let it sit a lot longer than 20 minutes. So yeah, I definitely recommend Goof Off. I'm just going to stop the video. That didn't really do too much. Alright, so I got some more goof off here. A lot of it's soaking into the cloth here. But that's probably, that might be as good as I'm going to get it right now. Like I know, I'll be able to get it a lot better if I use this thing actually, the uh, pad, scrub pad. But um, like intentionally, I might leave it looking like this because you're going to want it worn, but not as bad as this, okay? So I'm going to clean this side and then I'll show you how it looks when it's done. Alright, so here's the front, and if I flip it over, there's the back. Um, so I could rub off more, but like ideally I'm still going to want it really warm looking, right? So I might as well just leave it like that, um, and then put the twists in there. I'm not going to bother cleaning this off too much because that's going to be tucked up into the back of the pack in the way that I took it out. So, yeah, that's how to uh, clean your ribbon cable and how to remove it. All right, so I'm just going to show you the back side of uh, this hole here. So that's where the ribbon cable comes through. And then these other rubber um, wires or hoses come through. And they all just fit down onto these pegs. And then this thing here with the, I left the little screws in there so that I don't confuse them with the ones on the magnet. Um, and then that just sits down and clamps those into place. So I've got some forceps here and that's what I used. I reached in from the back and grabbed the ribbon cable and pulled it up through uh, because that hole is awfully tight. If you ever want to pull everything through here and drill a bit of a bigger hole. <laughs> then the next time you need to take this apart and pull on those things or take those things out of there, then you've got a little more clearance to do that. But that's not bad. You probably only need to pull out the ribbon cable, attach it, and then put it back in. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that. And then I'm going to show you once everything's all together, because right now, it's all taken apart on my floor and on my bed. All right, so make sure before you put the back on that you connect the speaker wire, um, which is that little yellow plug. Um, so I did that. And then for the screws that I'm putting back, um, I put one in the corner up here. And so far, it's just that one. And then these two, which were the short screws. And then the rest of these screws are all the same size, okay? 
So these uh, red holes that I've circled are going to be the ones where these tubes go back on, okay? Here, I might as well take this guy off. So I'll take that off for now. So these tubes, so there's this one, and then the one that looks like a like a mushroom kind of, that one there, like a little sunscreen bottle or something. Uh, they go, they're held in place underneath here on the other side uh, with uh, the next two screws. And then you just go all the way around the outside. And then anywhere where you don't have the um, threads here, because that's for um, your Alice frame, okay? So that's where your Alice frame is going to be strapped to. So anything else that looks like a screw hole probably is, <laughs> okay? So that's how you take your pack apart and change the ribbon cable or clean the ribbon cable. All right, here it is, all put back together. Um, so I got the ribbon cable back on there and I didn't wind it quite as tight as some of the pictures because I kind of want some of this color, the yellow and the red and the blues, uh, showing up. So if it were tighter than that, then you'd see mostly white. Um, so I kind of like it like that. Um, some other things I did to modify it were I made this a little bit more metallic looking. Uh, same with this drum, it's more metallic looking. Uh, I just used some dollar store stuff. It might wash off, but I guess time will tell. Um, same with the bumper. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, these screws here. So any visible screws, I went over with some, uh, uh, I think it was called cinnamon paint. And I went over, I'll get a flashlight, oops. Went over any areas that might look like they would rust. Kind of did what um, Adam suggested you could do. Um, same up here. So in Adam Savage's video, he uses something called Barnard clay. Um, I just used cinnamon paint. <laughs> um, that, these things I've been painting uh, like a bronze color or a brass color same back in there add a little more detail onto those uh, connectors weathered the clipper thing a bit clipper um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, this ion arm. Um, I made a mold of, uh, some kind of screw thing and then made these just out of, um, crazy glue and baking soda. And those turned out pretty good. I had to glue them on the surface because you can't really drill into there. So I got those on there. That looks, I'm kind of happy with that. And then, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the ribbon cable. That looks awesome. So much better than it was. Um, yeah, just some weathering overall in here where rust might settle. So I think about the fact that if this was sitting on your back, anything that would get rusty would get kind of rusty along the bottom edges of stuff like in here and you know down around here or something like that um and then just like old old screws will get rusty yeah this is awesome this is so much fun having a proton pack um so yeah give this a try with the ribbon cable and let me know how it works out Take care.